esports isn't a joke anymore. There's thousands of people watching. I knew that I need to put everything into it. I stopped hanging out with my friends and I just stayed on the computer day and night. That's what people are doing. This guy plays that. This guy plays that. When I fell in love with the game, I played more and more. <laughs> it would go from three or four hours to six, seven, eight hours a day. Break them now, we win the game. Let's go. I want to progress fast, as fast as possible. Jake and I grew up in San Francisco, and our childhood was pretty ordinary. My parents were always overseas. They have a business over in Asia, so they spent a lot of time in China. That definitely made the two of us more independent, and when we did things together, um, we kind of tried to outdo each other, yeah. I grew up playing Counter-Strike 1.6, and my brother always being around me, he eventually picked that up from me. I was trying to join the same server as him, but every time I kill him or kill my cousin, they would get mad and they would try to vote kick me in the server. And I would always feel pretty sad. My brother doesn't want to play with me. He doesn't want to hang out with me. I was just trying to make them happy and felt like we were hanging out together at the time, but I guess they took it another way. My brother was always the really good kid. He was the one who sets the bar high for my sister and I. He's a great student. He would have 4.0 GPA and he knows that video games come second. For me, I don't think that way. I think when I like to do something, I put that first. So my mom had a lot of leeway for my brother, but for me, growing up, it was a lot harder. My parents were the stereotypical Asian parents who wanted me to grow up to be a really successful lawyer, doctor, dentist, something that's common. But for me, I saw something different. Uh, I started watching Cloud9 and I saw how they would travel the world, they can get salary. And that's what kind of sparked myself for pursuing the dream of becoming a professional player. I dropped everything in school and I stopped hanging out with my friends and I just stayed on the computer day and night. It was kind of hard for me to explain to my parents because they despise playing video games. There are times where we don't even speak to each other during the day and we live in the same house. and. That's how much we kind of hated each other at one point. My parents actually kind of gave up on me. I was listening in on a phone call one day and I could hear her saying how I'm gonna be a failure in life, saying how I'm gonna be homeless, I'm gonna be begging for money, how the school's contacting me saying you're gonna have to leave, how I'm not getting an education like my brother who's so successful. I thought my mom kind of failed at being a mom and I just said, I might as well just leave then, I, I don't want to be here. And at the time I was 17, and I just flew to LA. At the end of one of the seasons, Cloud9 was announcing that Sean Garris was leaving, and I knew that this was a chance where I could possibly get on the team. I was just waiting for my opportunity. Sean Gares had came to the conclusion that's like, hey, you know what, I want to take a step back. And even one of the first names out of his mouth was, uh, was Stewie 2K. The idea was that we bring in fresh blood, uh, a new hunger to the team, and not some of this old guard that had been recycled over and over and over again. We wanted to bring someone with a, a new perspective on the game, and perhaps someone that could reignite where we left off. A week later, Stunner gave me a call and he talked about how the contract's ready for me. At the time, I was only 17 and my parents would never sign the contract for sure. So I told him that my birthday's in a few weeks. If you can wait for it, I'm gonna sign it right away and I'm gonna move into the gaming house whenever you need me to. We were all 17 at some point and said, you know, our parents might not back us up on this, but my gut feeling is that this is right and I wanna go for it. He knows what it is to kind of be this, this middle child and be different, wants to have his own path rather than the one that's been set by the older siblings. And there was so much criticism. There were so many people that didn't believe in it. They were visibly upset. There was pushback from the community. I mean, you've got to think, a rookie on the team, a, a pure rookie, coming into an organization that is 
probably hailed as the, the New York Yankees of esports. Not only was it community pushback, uh, within the team you could tell some of the vets didn't really give him the credit right off the bat. I mean, there's reaction videos of that old guard saying hey, he's trash, this is the worst pickup of all time, this is never going to amount to anything, what the hell is C9 doing? Like, who, who the hell is Stewie 2K, right? After the major, I guess some people felt like they've accomplished and done what they wanted to do in their Counter-Strike career, and not everyone's putting in all the effort that they should be, so I didn't see the future in the team anymore. The whole MIBR move uh, for me happened after WSG. I knew this could be a new opportunity and the, the very next step in my career where I can get even further. I think this change uh, help him grow as a person, as a human being, and for sure as a player. It's not just winning, it's, it's stay like for everybody that all he's been through, worth it, and now he's on the top. And that's one thing I really like about him. I don't see that many players that actually, doesn't really matter if he's doing bad or good, he's always trying his hard. Everyone struggled with family and CS, and now here he is, successful, but from what I understand, uh, they don't have too good of a relationship, uh, which is sad to see because I'm someone who's really close to my family, and I hope that's something that could change in the future because family is extremely important. Everybody that's worked in this industry can see that same boy or girl inside themselves that sat in their room for countless hours that really can taste it. They're so close to wanting to be a part of this bigger picture. C2K is a great example of a, a kid that was following his heart, he followed his dreams, and really never gave up on his aspirations. When he started, he had the backlash from his family, the community backlash as well. He's powered through rosters and, and teammates that didn't completely believe in him, to maturing as an adult on top of winning a major, and then now looking to grab his second title. He's not a rookie anymore, he's a champion. Hello, Mommy. Hey, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kima. Yeah. Hi, 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 yeah. Hi,